Internationalization is a huge deal in application development nowadays. Emerging markets are a great place to sell software, and what sounds like a big hairy deal by 18N is usually just comes down to just replacing a bunch of strings based on language and doing different date and number formatting. And the date, number, and currency formatting are handled by Angular already, so that's a big part of the battle right there. So what you're really doing is looking at just the string replacement stuff. And what does that entail? Basically, it means that all the strings used by the application will be stored in a table, one table per language, and then referenced in that table by a symbol. For example, if an English string is hello world, then there'll be an entry in the symbol table, hello in all uppercase, or hello underscore world in all uppercase. I mean, it depends on your system and, and how your company decides to do it. But there'll be one constant hello world symbol, and that'll be translated into all the different languages in the different tables. Then later on, as more translations are added, the UI will just use whatever the string is for hello world or that symbol in whatever the current language is in that slot and display that to the customer. Now, at the time I put this video together, there was no standard way to do this in Angular. So we're going to bring in a library written by Pascal Precht called Angular Translate. And let's start by building an application. And let's install that library using Bower. And start up the server. Okay, cool. So the first thing that we need to do is reference that library. And then we need to configure it. Now, in this case, what I'm saying is I'm defining the English or EN version of the string. And in this case, the hi everybody is going to translate into hi everybody. So let's go and use this. And we see it in the browser and nope. Okay, that didn't work. So what's happening here is the library doesn't know which language I'm currently operating in. So let's set that back in the config. And that, there you go. Okay, so now we have our preferred language set to English. But let's say that we want to do this at runtime. How do we do that? So let's go over the controller and actually set the language. And that works too, but how do we know that that actually changed anything? Let's go and uh, create another translation. In this case, I'm going to create a new German version of it, DE for Deutschland. So let's go back to the controller and now set that to German. Awesome. Guten Tag, which isn't exactly hi, everybody, but it's pretty close. So let's have uh, one last thing, and let's try and create a value here on the app, which is something that you might put in your script tag on the page called language. And so we're now setting a, a global value on the app called language. We can take this and use it here, just inject it as a dependency. And now we're back to English again. Easy peasy. So what we've seen here is just one element of the puzzle of getting a complete internationalization solution into an app. But it's a very, very important one. Why is it important to learn? Because as we move towards more single page applications, the burden of internationalization is going to fall increasingly on the client side of the equation. And that's where we're operating here. So learning how it's done and getting experience with some library, even if this isn't going to be the particular production library for internationalization for Angular is important. And once you get the hang of internationalization concepts like this one, it really isn't such a scary thing. Rarely does internationalization ever mean changing the logic of the application. So get in there and build some internationalizable applications and make some money overseas.